Good evening, Map here. Hope everyone's doing great. So, um, here yeah, I got the futures up. Um, today was a pretty good day overall. I will, I will probably say, uh, best day in in a couple weeks. That's for sure. Uh, when I've been through a little cold spell, but that's part of the the business. And uh, today gold perked up. That helped out a lot, and the dollar was lower. Here, right here, I'm looking at the uh, dollar index. It's up uh, 0.20% right now. A uh, little rebound from today's sell-off, and it's got it's over the 92 handle. Uh, today, we had a nice day. Um, like I mentioned in my video yesterday, if, uh, if the uh, bonds were to get bid up and the yields were to uh, decline, that we would see a rotation into, um, into tech. I said that in the yesterday's video, and that's exactly what happened today. Um, we had a huge uh, rally in the NASDAQ, um, a gain of 3.69. Uh, at one point, we were up, I think, over 4%, but we gave a little bit back. Um, S&P was up 54, and the Dow Jones was actually up like uh, 300 points. I want to say, oh, close to it. Uh, it got up to 32,146 and only, it only ended up 30. So it kind of um, uh, retreated there from the all time high. Um, at the end of the day, the market gave up some of its gains. And I think, I, I, I'm not convinced on this, uh, on this uh, uptick that we got today. Not, not, not convinced 100%. Um, the, the close wasn't that strong, in my opinion. Uh, the S&P lost. The S&P was up almost, uh, I want to say, 90 handles, at least. And uh, I think we gave back easily uh, 30, for sure. So um, let's, look at, let's look at the futures. Um, so the dollar's up, so all the currencies are, are down. Uh, Bitcoin is actually down 300, which is amazing. It's down because every day it's up. It's up to 55,000 almost. Now retreated down to 55. Uh, actually, I think it was up to, let's take a look. It got up to 56, 235 is the high tonight. Well, actually, no. Yeah, correct. Yeah. That's tonight's high. Uh, hit a low of 53,725, and right now we're at 54. Uh, 410 oil was down today and it's down again today uh and in, in the uh, opening uh, night session i think oil was down uh about a buck i want to say in the regular session today uh we were at 65 and down uh yeah so um i got a little position in there uh i think we should bounce back there We'll see what happens tomorrow. We have the uh, Wednesday EIA report, and uh, that'll give us some more of a picture on what's going on with the demand and supply of the uh, oil market. Uh, S&P, we're down, 725. Gold, down six. Uh, hogs, we're up about a buck today. And there is swine flu um, issues in China. <clears throat> so we might see um, an uptick in the, uh, in the hogs. I've done well this year trading hogs. If the, the HE, dash HE, I think takes up about 2,000 something in margin. Um, it's a pretty good uh, tradable vehicle. If hogs can get over 40, uh, 91, then maybe they can see triple digits. Who knows? Copper steady at four. Uh, key level on copper is 385. 385. Uh, copper's been trending good. Um, but you got to watch that 385 low. I think it got up to like 430 plus. I think the all-time high is 450, if not mistaken. Um, cattle's been pretty st stable at uh, about a buck twenty. 
Maybe that's the next one to pop in the ag commodity space. Small caps down to two and change. Uh, NASDAQ uh, down 33. Uh, Dow Jones down 9. So pretty flat. Natural gas was pretty uh, quiet today, pretty stable. We had a little spike there at the end of the day. Uh, so keep your eye on natural gas. Maybe uh, do something in the EIA report tomorrow. Uh, palladium and platinum pretty flat. Um, silver had a nice day. Was about uh, up at close to a buck, uh, around twenty six level. Uh, right now it's getting back about thirty cents. Uh, the VIX catching a bit, a uh, little bit. I think it got a, as a low of uh, twenty three. Uh, I know I picked some up at twenty three seventy five. So um, got down there. I haven't looked at the uh, uh, at the uh, ag report that came out today. That wasi. Um, but the grains are down a little bit, and there was a, a muted reaction to the report. Not not much happening there. And the bonds have uh, maybe reached the bottom because uh, they've continued to uh, uptick. They uptick today, and they're upticking after hours. Uh, pretty much uh, all the bonds, uh, the thirty, the five, the ten, and the two are all green as of now. I uh, wasn't really active um, in, in in particular names. Uh, I'm just trading these instruments right here because the, the, the swings are good enough to be swinging. Uh, right now, I'm long the Mexican peso um, because that's a lot of correlation with oil. I think oil is going to go higher. Um, I'm long gold. I'm short. The small caps, I'm, I'm short all the indexes right now, as of right now. Uh, the small caps, NASDAQ, I got short today. Uh, and the Dow Jones on this big spike, I, I got short. Just to neutralize some deltas in the overall portfolio. I'm a little uh, net short when I beta weight my portfolio. I'm just a little slightly short. Um, these are small positions. Um, what else? I'm um, long the energy complex here in the QG, uh, QG and QM. Long those two. Um, long silver. Long VIX. Uh, long wheat. Uh, I'm also long corn and and uh, and uh, soybeans. I'm long all the grains, but just different cycles. That's why you don't see a flag there. And uh, the bonds, uh, I'm long the 10 year and I sold some calls against my position. Um, down a little bit on that bond trade, but that's part of uh, balancing out the portfolio. Um, in particular names, um, these are all the uh, futures. I did a, I haven't really been active in, in particular names. Um, but I did do a put credit spread in uh, RMO. Um, I did a put credit spread in Silvergate as a digital currency play. They're a bank that deals with uh, digital currency, Silvergate, SI. Uh, about, about a call in Valley, which is uh, a miner. There has been a lot of call action in there. Um, I did a calendar in CarMax. Uh, CarMax uh, chart looks pretty good. Uh, mentioned Google was trading nicely the other day. I did a put credit spread in Google. I actually bought stock, not gonna believe me, but I bought stock in Ford. And uh, did a put credit spread in Boeing because they got better orders. I think I might be heading higher. Calendar in Microsoft and a calendar in uh, the XBI, which is the uh, biotech EF, uh, ETF. So that was my day today, uh, semi-active. Uh, I've been just trading the, um, the futures mainly and uh, either scalping them intraday or holding them 
at swing trades. Uh, it's been working okay. Can't complain. Uh, like I said, today was a, a, a much, much better day. And um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but um, I started trading full time back in uh, about uh, April, May, when the pandemic hit full blown um, and the CARES Act came out. I took advantage and uh, took my 401k money out of the uh, out of the fidelity uh, uh, program that I had through uh, Hertz, where I used to work at. Uh, got laid off because Hertz had stopped matching us, and I said, "Well, with the CARES Act, I can take this money out, and uh, they let you take up to a hundred thousand dollars out, uh, penalty free, tax free." You don't have to put that money back into a retirement account until three years. So you have a couple options. So you either put the money back within three years into another retirement account um, to avoid taxes, or you could pay taxes on the money in a three-year program plan. Uh, this year you pay taxes, next year you pay a portion, and the following year you pay uh, taxes uh, you could do that. But the plan is, uh, my plan is to put it back after three years, the principal that I took out. So, um, you know, and the good thing is that I got that money back in uh, April, April, May, and I started trading full time because I knew that the company I was working for, uh, the future wasn't bright and they were going through bankruptcy. I knew a lot of things were going to happen there. Um, and I did really, really well. I had a great year in uh, uh, 20, and in 21, I'm off to a great start. Now, I did, I did, ha- I, I did, I did uh, have a little pullback in the in this sell-off that we had a couple uh, in the last couple weeks, um, and I left some money on the table, but I'm still very profitable for the year, and um, took a uh, a lot of the gains. I uh, decided to take uh, actually. I decided to take all of the gains and just leave what I had started with back in April, which was the 401k money that I initially had started with and, uh, you know, was able to liquidate uh, an investment property that I have. So I'm very happy and proud of myself and my performance. And uh, every day is a learning lesson here. It's doable. You just got to hustle and just keep up with the trends and uh, watch the markets and and know how to bait away your portfolio and not to get too uh, um, over leveraged. Um, you know, if you have a, a, a normal size account, you gotta trade to that account. Uh, it's not. It's not. A, it's not trying to be a hero. It's you know, singles and doubles is what I like to call it. No home runs, singles and doubles. I see guys buying you know ten thousand shares of a stock, so it goes up a dollar. Uh, that's just. Uh, you know, I, I like to be able to sleep at night, and the way I do things, I'm able to sleep at night, at night very peacefully. Um, so, anyways, um, like I said, with the action in the indexes and uh, in, in the commodity space and with the futures, you know, I tr- I'm not really picking individual stocks. I'm still looking at it, um, and I do hold some, but it just it just doesn't you know, makes sense to me at the time. Right now, I don't really think it's a stock picker's market. I really don't. I don't see it on the tape. Um, The only one that that just baffles me every day is uh, GameStop. I just don't understand that, but whatever. Um, We could take a look at the um, bar chart here for a second. See some of the names. I like to look at this and, you know, like that. I know the prices of the stocks and stuff like that. Um, options. And then you go to over here, most active options. So Apple had a nice day today, but I already uh, have exposure through the NASDAQ and uh, actually sold it. Um, my NASDAQ futures, I sold them on today's pop. So I did good there. Uh, Neo. Uh, back up. I have no position. 
AMC was up, Tesla up nicely. I have no position. Um, I did do a position in Boeing. Uh, Facebook, I have no position, but you can get access it through the Qs or the um, or the Nasdaq futures. AMD, nice bounce back. I do have exposure to the chips through the SMH, uh, which uh, had a nice day today. The SMH, SMH. Uh, I think it was up like twelve bucks. I did a nice put credit spread in there. <clears throat> it was up 12 bucks so i have a position in here that i did um so i can get exposure to the chips and that's the way i've been playing things uh lately uh financials were uh down for the most part i have exposure to the financial sector through the xlf and I'll pull up an ETF tab here so you can see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> GameStop, I don't understand that deal. Valley and GE, I'm long calls. Ford, I got long the stock. DraftKings, I'm, I uh, actually have a position in. I sold some puts. And Alibaba as well. Got long Microsoft. Uh, I'm not sure if I have a position in NVIDIA. I have to check. I think I do. Square, I'm long as a Bitcoin correlation play. And uh, let me see here. Baidu, I uh, have a put credit spread long there uh, for some international exposure in the tech area. Intel, I do have a put in Intel. I think they're pretty cheap. Freeport McMoran, I have stock. It's a copper correlated play. Um, that's pretty much it there. Can look at that up nine. Crazy. It's like a Bitcoin correlated play out of China. But that thing is up and down like crazy. <clears throat> I have a put crest spread and Airbnb for some hotel exposure, travel exposure. Stitch Fix got hammered today. Uh, Space had a nice bounce back. Peloton had a nice bounce back that's been hammered. Um, here you could pick here ETFs. So you could talk about what you see here. You can get exposure broad base. So if you want to do like the Qs, the Qs, the main stocks that make that up are the fangs so they make up a big portion of that index so if you want to get exposure to them you can use that the iwm is small caps so if you want to get exposure to small caps you could do the id iwm these, these are etfs so i use the futures because they're more tax friendly and uh they trade 23 23 hours a day five days a week i'm gonna get a break when they mark them to market as you can see here, there's pretty much an ETF for everything, and you can just pick the basket. Or you can go and see what is the main uh, allocation in each basket. Uh, you got for gold, uh, EWZ for international, EEM is international, etc. So you can play in many ways. This way is, in my opinion, less stressful, uh, easier to manage with the ETFs or the futures. So that's why I've been saying I really I'm not I'm not really picking specific stocks unless I see something that I've mentioned in the videos that you know makes sense to me at least and it gives me a little bit of diversification in a different sector that maybe is not an ETF or or um, that I see you know that might be working out in the kind of uh, climate environment we're in and the chart technically looks good and the stocks acting fundamentally well. Well, anyways, uh, please like the video, subscribe, share it. I think there's a lot of good uh, um, information here and uh, feedback to help you with your trading and uh, making some money. Uh, I watch. Uh, I would. I'd watch it closely. Um, today, at the end, we gave up a little bit. The market is very choppy. We had a big up day. I'm not gonna say we didn't, but we gotta see what it. it, it 
the economic data, I don't think it's all that great. Um, I think that, in, you know, when we were in the Great Recession, we were losing about, I think the, we lost the most was 600,000 jobs at a one-week uh, print there. I mean, we're losing 700,000 700, jobs a week, like every week. So, you know, the trade deficits are bad. The debt is bad. Uh, the government deficits are bad. Uh, you know, it's a big debt bubble. Um, the jobs are just very bad. It, 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 it's, it's a bad situation. And um, a lot of people are struggling out there. Um, and, and markets are making all-time highs. So Wall Street is not Main Street. Uh, I don't care what anybody says. I mean... You got the Dow Jones making all time highs, and you, how many people are unemployed? So, and 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 that unemployment rate is, is not accurate because how many people have fallen off the, uh, the the payroll? So, just keep that food for thought. You know, uh, it's a, a Fed driven market. All this liquidity, uh, being provided by the Fed, our economy's uh, debt driven economy. And um, right now, what's going on is that the bonds, uh, you know, the bond vigilantes are saying inflation is around the corner. And that's why interest rates are, are, are going up. So the stock market don't like higher interest rates. Our economy doesn't like higher interest rates. And in my opinion, we, we can't raise interest rates because that would be just shooting our economy in the head uh we are a debt driven economy on cheap money um we have trade deficits and we're not producing enough goods and that's why we will have some pretty hot inflation in my opinion uh when when all these think about it a family a family of four that doesn't make one hundred and fifty thousand dollars they will be getting put in their account fifty six hundred dollars here in the next month. A family of a uh, of three forty two hundred, right in their account. So we don't produce. I think in the last two months, I think we've produced seven thousand manufacturing jobs, um, and there's stories that all we have is containers coming. Like in California, you can look it up, Google it. Um, the containers coming from the goods that are coming from other countries to our country and then the cargo the the is the the, the, the uh, containers are just piling up in the california port um because it don't even make sense to bring them back i don't think empty because we don't produce much Seven thousand manufacturing job uh stimulus checks going out to families who need them and uh supposedly savings rates have been growing in the country and the last retail report was good but it was a you know a retail report that was just basically government handouts and the last job report was a lot of uh a lot of people just going back to to restaurant jobs as waiters and bartenders basically um we're not making much stuff anymore uh and when that money hits our accounts it's gonna be not many goods and a lot of people chasing it and that's what causes inflation so my opinion we're gonna see you know hotter cp we actually get the cpi and ppi report i think tomorrow calendar wednesday so yeah we get the we get the uh, consumer price index tomorrow at 8 30 along with uh ppi this is a this is an important report right here. Consumer price index CPI eight thirty in the morning. Measures changes is an index that measures changes over time in the price level of consumer goods and services purchased by residents, which reflects the overall changes in price level. This is a this one's a good one to watch. My assumption is it'll come in a little hotter, and uh, that's what the Fed wants. So. We saw we we saw we shall see what happens tomorrow. Well, anyways, have a good night and share the video, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.